back to Clip It. Today, my guests, Tiffany Jenneret and Jen Darby. Hello. Hello, ladies. Welcome to Clip It. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Um, Jen, <laughs> can you please tell us a little bit about yourself? Um, so, again, I'm Jennifer. I am a salon owner and stylist. Um, I specialize in like all natural hair, not natural like twist and curl out, but cuts, color, press, all of that, you know, hair care stuff. Um, I've been a stylist. I graduated hair school in 2008 and I've been a behind the chair ever since. And I opened my salon six years ago. So I've just been practicing and, you know, full-time stylist every yeah. day. Congratulations. Thank you. And Tiffany, um, you're my very, very, I would like to, you're like a daughter to me, but um, can mm -hmm. you tell us a little bit about yourself as well? Um, okay, so for those of you who haven't seen the prior video, I'm Tiffany Jenneret. I've been in the hair industry since I was about 16 years old. Um, 16 years old, I was behind the chair. Um, and then I worked for uh, Juanita James for a very long time, and she helped me mold me into the professional that I am today. Um, and I work for all different types of salons. I work for independent salons. I work for corporate salons, um, black salons, white salons. So um, I'm kind of like rounded with the what I do, like white hair, black hair, doesn't matter, color and diversity. Very, yeah. The business of beauty is very ugly today. And the topic, that's the topic for today because with this pandemic that's going on, Jen, I mean, what's your what's your take on this whole pandemic? Um, it's it's very scary, it's very humbling, is it's very confusing, I can say. Um I never foreseen anything like this i'm sure <laughs> most of us haven't no. um, just not being able to work at all um and just the whole you know outside of just the beauty industry just you know what's going on with everyone and the sickness and the death and it's just you know at, at our doorstep and yes. every day we just never know yes never know. and you know just thinking about um all different scenarios far as in the beauty industry, you know, like far as some 1099s or just some people that might not be in a better position as others, where so they have to feed their children and they have to pay their bills. How do you think businesses um, are going to deal with this? Or not just businesses, but business owners that, you know, were shut down. Totally shut down. Mom? Are you want to go ahead and answer? Or Tiffany, did you want to answer that? So, um, like I said before, <clears throat> like everybody is going to be affected by it, whether it's big business or small business, it's, it doesn't matter because nobody is working, only the uh, what they call essential. So, the non essential workers, the, the hairstylists, the barbers, the nail salon, the makeup artists, even the construction workers. My husband, he's an a electrician. Like, none of those people are, are allowed to work. So, those people, if they're not physically working, no money is coming in. So, it's going to be, it's going to greatly affect everyone. And especially, like I said before, if you don't have <clears throat> a good amount of uh, uh, savings, then y you're you're really in a very tough position. So it is affecting everyone. Yes, it is. It's definitely affecting everyone. Um, the beauty industry creeps into every fabric of society, and what I've noticed over this the, the last couple of uh, weeks a month and a half or so is that they they're not touching bases on on our profession they're talking about the restaurants they're talking about you know the big businesses um they're not really talking about us as hairstylists makeup artists massage therapists um and how it has really really affected 
our industry. Um, Tiff, you're a little different than some people as far as you have compensation. Um, that was the last video, whoever didn't see it, but you could, um, you know, reiterate on that. But um, again, if you don't have a ton of savings, what do we do? What do, you know, Jen, do you have any uh, input on that? Because you're a salon owner and yeah. I know that you positioned yourself different than some people um, as far as your finances. But for those that haven't, can we have a little bit of compassion and empathy in regards to where they might be right now in this most pandemic? Most definitely. I mean, first of all, compassion, you have to have compassion for everybody because we're not all blessed to be in, you know, situations that we may be in, you know, regardless of, you know, profession or race or anything. Um, but I feel like it is definitely humbling. And I, I pray that a lot of people learn, you know, just to do better with their finances. Um, I think that our industry definitely like the beauty industry is billions and billions of dollars. And, you know, for, you know, the, like the government and just people and other like big businesses to not be taken as serious. It's kind of like if the beauty industry shut down, that's a massive hit to the economy period. Um, nice. But yeah, I think that I have so much compassion for, you know, people that might not be in those positions. And I'm I'm very thankful that that aid is, is out there and those loans and grants and stuff. And I hope that a lot of people, you know, in our industry took advantage of that to help along um, the way during this pandemic. Okay. To um, put light on what you just said as far as the loans and the grants and everything, um, yesterday in the news was just... Uh, put out there that the SBA is out of money and that's a serious um, offense to a lot of people. Um, how do you run out of money in just two months? But well, that's a whole nother situation right there. I'm not going to go there. <laughs> oh, we just have to pray real hard. <laughs> Tiffany, um, I know it's like we're losing thousands and thousands of dollars um as as a business as a whole um let me ask you a question do you think that it would be safe for people in our profession to go back to work and work with masks and gloves and sanitize on a daily basis just to make ends meet so um one of my clients she has sent me a link to a petition and she was I, you know i guess it was going around to all the stylists to send to um the governor so all the the hairstylists and barbershops can have a soft opening in two weeks and so i looked through it and i i was like i'm not signing this i was like i'm not signing this i said because um most of those people like when when the city opens back up the first place they're going to go is the hair salons and the barbershops. That's the first place they're going to go. And these hairstylists and, and barbershops, they, they already lost money. So they're going to be trying to make up what they lost. They're not going to stick to, oh, I'm only going to do one person per two hours or one per. It, it's, it's going to be swamp. I, I, I've been in the industry since I was 16. I know how these salons work. Let's so it's keep not this thing be, real. It's not going to be safe for us. <laughs> Like number yes. one and number two, it's going to be okay. We could wear a mask. Okay, we could wear a mask. But as far as gloves, like we're doing presses and you know things like that. How we can't wear gloves all the time throughout the entire service. So exactly. we're going to be greatly affected by it. Like we're going to be because before anybody goes to work, they're coming straight to us. They're coming straight to us, and it's not enough. Uh, Corona test. Everybody out there don't haven't even been tested yet. Right. They haven't even been tested, and the ones that have been tested and that were positive, they haven't been retested. So right. how do you know that somebody that had the coronavirus went through the two week quarantine still doesn't have the coronavirus, and now they're eligible to come into a hair salon and sit in your chair? Right. And so basically, to this is a very great um question because is it worth it us risking our lives going back 
to do somebody's hair without the clarity, Jen, of that this pandemic of this virus is not going to to kill us, or the fact that people are not being tested properly, us to actually walk back into the salon with gloves and masks or whatever on, is it worth risking our lives to, and I, it, I can't speak for everybody. This is just my opinion, your opinion. Let's just, just keep it real. This is not for everybody. For those that choose to, you know, tr go back in, uh, to work without the clarity that, that the atmosphere is, you know, safe right. for us to go back to work. Um, God bless them. Um, it has been said that even with them opening back up these states and these cities, that it's going to be hundreds of thousands of more deaths because it's not, it's not going to be safe, but they're going to open up. They're going to open up anyway. So Jen, do you think that, and we're, we're hopefully in this in this interview we'll, with this topic, we'll come up with some type of solutions, which, you know, but do you think that it's worth risking your life and your children's life without the clarity that it's a clear way for us to go back into the salons and work safely? Um, honestly, like no necessity is worth my life. I mean, not not necessity. Um, of course, like I need to provide for my family, but if it gets down to that point where I'm going to have to be creative or find other ways that, you know, that it might be safer, then that's what I'll have to do. But just my children are out of school, so daycares are closed. They will have to be with me. So that means they will have to be in that line of uh, fire with this whole virus and everything. And then just not even me, my children, but you know, the clients, because I think that like Tiffany talked on, talk, talked about, like once people rush back to the salons and back to, you know, to the chairs and the barbers, how they talk about the second wave, that second wave is going to hit hard because yes. even though they say, okay, only a certain amount of people in a certain space at the same time or whatever, it's just, I don't foresee that happening. Like, you know, again, touching on what Tiffany said and just people trying to make up for the, the income that they they lost and trying to get back. And um, I, I'm afraid. <laughs> I'm personally yes. afraid. I'm afraid. Um, and there is, it's just too new. The virus is too new. There's not, there's development information on it every single day. Like there's, until there's a vaccine, I, I think that's when my comfort level will, you know, rise a little bit. But right now it's just, it's scary because that person with the mask on, like we're in such close contact. Like you have to think of our assistants or whoever else, like they're actually standing over someone, breathing over them, you know, even if they're a mask, it's just, it's, it's, it's dangerous. I feel yeah. like it's dangerous. I don't think that it's worth it. Um, I'm going to wait. I'm going to, you know, stay watching the news and with the health professionals stay and just take it from there yes and um tiffany just getting back to uh, the topic the um the business of the beauty industry has gotten really ugly for a lot of people um people are dying um we have actually lost uh for a season the passion um, of doing what we love to do. And I know for a lot of people, it's hard that, you know, each and every day when we're doing something that we love and we can't do any longer, it's like something was taken away from us, mm -hmm. like instantly, you know, right. not just the passion and the love of, of beautifying people each and every day, but the passion and the, and the love that we get just going in every day to um service people also right right, right. and <clears throat> it, like this is across all industries it's not just the beauty industry it's you know people they they love to do all, all types of stuff and that's been taken away from them but it's it hasn't been taken away from them in vain they're doing this to prevent something that can be devastating like if you ever read about the the spanish flu the spanish flu killed about 500 million people that's insane 
insane. So back then they didn't have the, the social distancing and stuff like that, you know, not until it was too late. So they're trying to prevent that from happening. So if we have to sacrifice us putting our passions aside to save lives, then so be it. Then so be it. Well said, well said. And ladies, I tell you, um, the future of the beauty industry is, is definitely uncertain right now. We are, in, we are in uncertainty times right now. But it's, it's people that have faith and trust, um, like you, Jen, to just encourage, like, you know, maybe someone that just may open a business, maybe not even a year ago, not even two months ago. Do you have any encouraging words? Um, like, we can't tell someone how to feel. But if we can just try to encourage some people out there, do you have anything that you might want to say um, just to those that might not have a little, you know, hope right now? Um, just keep hope. Like, you know, stay close, close to, you know, whoever, with that spiritual connection, whoever that may be. Um, and just, you know, stay hopeful. Like, we'll get through it. I mean... <laughs> not to get on the government, but we have to still have some hope within our government that they won't let us, they won't let our government just crumble and we'll, we'll, they'll figure it out, help us figure it out as well. Um, and just, you know, don't sacrifice your well being of yourself, of your clients, of your family, you know, worrying about, you know, money. I mean, it's kind of like, a weird thing it's kind of like well how do the I double edged sword just, yeah it's just like you you have to keep you have to look at the bigger picture you know um the good thing is you know we can't get evicted you know no one's going to be put out on the street at this point like i think the the government put some guidelines there so just 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 stay hopeful just stay hopeful okay. um i know it's a lot of sacrifices you have to make you just have to make those sacrifices and differentiate, you know, our wants and our needs. And that's the best thing we can do right now. Amen. Well said, Jen. So, um, you guys can answer this question separately, but do you think that this whole um, pandemic will bring us as a community of, of industry professionals closer together? Do you think that that will open up a mindset of, of unity with maybe even if it starts with just a small group of us where we just come together and work together and try to just help each other through this thing tiffany um i would hope so that's something that i always wanted period anyway you know i, I always wanted especially in the black community in the black community with the, the black salons i always wanted it to be like a team but for some reason with our people it's not that way so hopefully what can come out of this is that we can all unite and and become a team and support one another instead of you know backbiting and you know being negative we can just be positive be positive out of this situation hopefully yes hopefully and jen do you have an input on that because um you know everybody has different scenarios in regards to their experiences would you like more of a community and a, a network of people that you can trust and actually grow together? Do a you think the pandemic will bring that to fruition for some of us? I would hope so as well. Um, but a thousand percent, um, like I've worked with Tiffany before and I think she can attest that I am like a, a team player. Like I like to share whatever knowledge I have to help whoever, as long as, you know, they're willing or want it or whatever. And um, that's not something that I've seen in my years of experience, sadly, but I hope that, you know, this can bring unity and, you know, shine a light on, you know, like we, we are a dope, like, culture of women and adult culture of just like the beauty industry and together like man <laughs> this yes. can be a very unstoppable force and it's just you know working together there are power in numbers and sadly people don't understand that and yes. you know 
the cliche of there's no I in team is just something that people just don't get. <laughs> but uh, I am hopeful and I'm, I'm there. I'm there for whoever, whoever I can help in any kind of way, I'll start. Amen. Amen. Well, ladies, I definitely um, look forward to um, connecting with you. Uh, we have, we're going to have to wrap it up. Do you have any um, words that you want to, um, to say before we end this, this, um, I, you know what? I just wanted to say, because, um, you know, right now people, they have a lot of time on their hands and with this time, just try to be, uh, take something positive out of it. You know what I'm saying? We can't do what we want to do. We can't, you know, go out and go to dinner. We can't work like we want to, but let's up our game. If we, we could practice cutting on a mannequin or we could get our bodies together or we could grow spiritually, you know, so just take this time and grow as a person. Okay. How about you, Jen? Yeah, I agree. Um, just, it, it, it's sad, but the, the great thing that we have is the internet, <laughs> which is another positive because it's free for people who, you know, may not have been able to have it. And it's like, you can learn so much. We're able to, even this, this, you know, platform that we're on now to still be able to communicate and still be able to learn from each other. Um, just take, take the, you know, make the best out of what you have. Like they say, make, you know, lemonade yeah. from lemons. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well, ladies, I just want to thank you so much for coming on to Clip It Real Talk. And I wish you both the best in your future endeavors. And I want to say this is definitely an opportunity for all of us to marinate on moving forward and who and what it is that we may accomplish because all things are possible. And this might be a season for people to, to recreate themselves or to, mm -hmm. to think about uh, different, you know, endeavors. Um, especially if the two year social distancing applies. <laughs> um, that's the hard part. It's a lot of things that we're gonna have to swallow and see what, what happens. But I definitely thank you guys for coming on to Clip It and giving us your professional view and your input on this pandemic. Thank you You're so welcome. much. And have a wonderful, wonderful day, ladies. All right. All right. All right.